This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University, and today I wanted to talk about Bitcoin's two essential scarcities. Scarcity number one is the one that everyone always knows about, the limited supply of the digital asset. They're just 21 million Bitcoin, which is equivalent to 2.1 quadrillion Satoshis because there are 100 million Satoshis in each Bitcoin. The importance of this 21 million Bitcoin cap is hard to overestimate. It implies credible past and future monetary policy. It provides this wonderful hedge against fiat debasement when you hold Bitcoin and opt out of fiat. And also everyone knows that 21 million is what makes Bitcoin special. But scarcity number two is what I wanna talk about today and it's equally essential. This is limited block space, Bitcoin's limited block space. You only get approximately one block every 10 minutes. So approximately 52,560 blocks on year every average. I just took six, uh, six blocks an hour times 24 hours times 365 days to get this estimate. So you only have 52,000 roughly blocks every year on average. Further, the amount of data that can be included in each block is capped. Thus, the amount of data that can be put onto the Bitcoin blockchain every year is limited. And there is a maximum supply of this, whether you have ordinals and inscriptions or not, there's still a hard cap on the amount of data that you can include. This is what makes Bitcoin block space perhaps the most scarce real estate in the world. And what makes the second kind of scarcity just as important as the first kind of scarcity, the 21 million Bitcoin, it's because the two kinds of scarcity are related, as I alluded to yesterday. If you don't keep block space scarce, a robust transaction fee market can never develop. If blocks aren't full, everyone can get included, get their transaction included in a block by just bidding the lowest transaction fee of one sat per V-byte, one Satoshi per V-byte. And transaction fees are a function of the amount of data that you take up in the block space. They're not a function of the value transmitted. So it's not something like one or 3% of the total dollar value. It's a function of the data that your transaction takes up. And if you have more inputs and more outputs or something like this, you can have, be charged a higher transaction fee. Also, if you wanna have urgency to your transaction and be included in the next block versus a block in 30 or 60 minutes from now. But a robust transaction fee can never develop if block space is not scarce. If blocks aren't full, everyone can get included in the next block by just bidding the lowest fee of one Satoshi per V-byte, which is a measurement of data. If a robust fee market, i.e. higher fees, does not develop, there's then no good way to pay miners for their work, except by adding a tail emission. So for example, after, after the quote unquote last Bitcoin is mined, you just add a small amount of Bitcoin to every subsequent block to pay miners like Monero does. But if you do this, you've just destroyed the 21 million Bitcoin cap which is Bitcoin's first essential scarcity that was proclaimed from the rooftops at the very beginning of Bitcoin. And this is what everyone knows Bitcoin for. So Bitcoin's two scarcities, the scarcity of the asset 21 million and the scarcity of the block space are both essential and very closely related and both need to be protected. So let me be very clear about this. Any attempt to increase the Bitcoin block size that you sometimes hear people still talking about or the block time, and for example, having a block come out every five minutes instead of every 10 minutes, any attempt like this to increase the Bitcoin block size or block time is an attack on Bitcoin. If you're finding this video helpful so far, I just ask you to hit that subscribe button. That really helps out the channel's reach. Hit the like button, leave a comment, question, suggestion for a future topic, and share this video as well. So I wanna repeat that one last time because this is very, very important. Any attempt to increase the block size or the block time is an attack on Bitcoin. Bitcoin. That's why we already fought the block size wars. And in this case, the good guys did win. Bitcoin Cash, Bcash, which is a fork, has been one of the losers in this battle. It only has a market cap of 4.5 4 billion at the moment. Bitcoin Satoshi's vision, which is nothing of the sort, has nothing to do with Satoshi or his vision. BSV has a market cap of 976 million, so less than a billion. By contrast, the winner of the block size wars, BTC, the real Bitcoin has a market cap of 850 billion. You can also see who won this war by taking a look at the hash rate. So Bitcoin's hash rate, the average over the past 90 days has been 464, 400, 465 exahashes per second. This is the hash rate of the entire network. You compare that to Bcash. So Bitcoin's is 464, Bcash's is just two exahashes per second. So what you, this means is you could take less than 1% of Bitcoin's hash rate, you could divert it, you could divert this hashing power from the mining rigs and divert it to do a permanent 51% attack 
on Bcash usage, just less than 1% of Bitcoin's hash rate. The question that leads to then is why would anyone hold Bcash when they could hold BTC? And the answer is, of course, they don't. This is why Bcash has been crashing against BTC since 2017, and the same goes for BSV. If you're still holding on to one of these forks, you don't understand uh, network effects, you don't understand hash rates, and you have no idea, you can't even spot a fraudster like the BSV guys are. If we take a look at BSV's hash rate, it's even worse. It has a hash rate currently of approximately 579 PETA hashes. Bitcoin's uh, hash rate is 464 exahashes, which is 464,000 PETA hashes compared to just 500, what did we say, 579 PETA hashes. So Bitcoin has a much, much higher hash rate than both Bcash and BSV, and thus is a much more secure network. There's nothing benevolent or humanitarian or egalitarian about wanting Bitcoin's price to stay low forever, as we said yesterday. If Bitcoin was still priced at a dollar per Bitcoin, it would have a market cap of just 21 million, and it would not be able to service the global economy, much less even a small city. Likewise, there's nothing benevolent or humanitarian or egalitarian about wanting Bitcoin base layer fees to stay low forever. Because if transaction fees are too low, the Bitcoin blockchain will no longer have good settlement finale. It will be too easy to rewrite the chain and toss transactions out that have already settled and thus will be of no use to anyone. Higher transaction fees will cause many growing pains for many of us. We're going to continue to talk about it on the channel, but they are essential to Bitcoin's fundamental scarcity, the two scarcities that we've talked about today, as well as Bitcoin's security. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.